All right, we're going. Uh, welcome to my session about PowerShell for Horizon View. I've been expanding the VMware HV helper for the last half year, since, since early this year, because in the helper it was missing a lot of functions that we need. This disclaimer is for all the official sessions. For me, it's also applicable because some of the functions I will show are not in the official helper module yet, but they are in my own dev version already. You can download them, but they're not in the official helper yet. I need to finish them off, add some stuff, but they work. Uh, my name is Wouter Kirsten. I'm a three-year V expert. I'm also a VMware EUC champion and all around Horizon View API junkie. Uh, you can my find my blog at retout.nl, on Twitter at magneet underscore nl. And if you want to mail me, you can do it over there. And I work for any link in the Netherlands, but this is more community thing. Okay, so the VMware HV helper module. You are required to have PowerShell, PowerCLI 6451, because that's what was when PowerCLI for Rise View was introduced. Some of the functions that I will show actually require the latest PowerCLI version because some things are added over there and we need them. The first URL is the official download where you can get it in the, in the example scripts. The second one is my alpha build and the, that has all the, the newest uh, functions, but it might uh, miss some settings that you can't set yet or it might miss the help function or something like that or the examples. And you need to copy that, the VMware HV helper module, the, the folder to your PowerShell modules. Connecting to the APIs is very simple. You do connect HV server, server name. Up until the hackathon at Monday, I thought if you want to do connect uh, with username and password on the prompt, it required the password to be in plain text. Actually, it isn't anymore. It now it, uh, it has been added, it was not documented. You can use a PS credential, and I haven't tested this yet, but you could also use the password and secure string. But I need to test that, but it should work according to the, to the help function now. Let's first connect. Uh, one thing I'm going to say, the GIFs that I created, they keep looping. On my Windows system, they don't, so I didn't know that, but I couldn't edit it anymore. So you'll see me connecting over here. Then I will create a password, because for, for some uh, functions you need a password, and I like to put it in a secure string so we can use, use that for later. Okay, it, it can't leave, it didn't come through. One of the first functions that I'm going to add in the official module, uh, it's working on the beta, is get HV health. Because up until now, you had several services that you could pull uh, health information, and I've decided to join those and uh, make a get HV health, so you actually get, are able to get the health status for your connection server, for, for the pods, everything. You, you see the descriptions it has over here, those, that's what you can use for it, and it, it will raw, uh, give you the data from the from the APIs, so I haven't uh, filtered anything on it. Let's do one for the AD yeah. You won't you won't really see what it's playing because it's looping, but you see quickly that it gives a little bit of information about Active Directory. Uh, you, you will see it. And for connection server, it gives uh, it gives another bit of information and you'll see that uh, the output from the APIs are not equal to each other you, so you'll get some other things every time for what you're pulling. Some of the output you get is multi-layered. Uh, you'll see me using between brackets and the dot and then the thing I'm expanding. You can do select object expand property but some things go several layers deep so you get putting in select object min expand property, so that's why I'm using it this way. Yeah, and this gives some information about the connections, uh, the amount of sessions that are open. This is what you see also in the, in the GUI. 
what this does is certificate held. It will give you information about your certificate, if it has been expired, if it's uh, a valid it's a certificate, and why it isn't. You will see this in the GUI, with, uh, it will have a red button. Yeah, something wrong with the certificate. But this is how you pull that information using the APIs. Yeah, for event database, the same. The problem is with event database, it gives only a couple of objects, but you need the actual data object to get the information. So you have to pull the data and then it will show that. For, yeah, you can see it now, lab SQL 1, it gives the port, it gives the SQL server, the username that is used, database name, and for example, virtual center does the same thing. And pot. I've added a lot of this, I will skip some. So session information. For the original VMware HV Helper module, it had one commandlet to get information about sessions, and the only thing it returned was the amount of active sessions. Nothing else, no data about the sessions themselves. So what I did is use the, the queries and rebuild, a re a created the get HV local session that gives you all the sessions for the local pods you are connected to, and get HV global session for all the sessions globally if you have a cloud pod federation. The, because with the Horizon View, uh, the, with the APIs, you, to pull information, you can't really pull information from other pods than you are connected to. So for some information to help, to get help for all your pods, you will need to connect to every pod. And with the global sessions, you're actually able, that's one of the few things that you're able to get all global information. So for the local session, it gives you names data, it gives you provisioning data probably, reference data, session data, and you can go, can go deeper into that again by expanding names data, for example. This will give you the username, it gives you the desktop it's connecting to, what kind of desktop it is. And you can see it here. If it's a, uh, will a few composer, it's of course link clone, instant clone engine, and instant clone. It will if also give you the information about the data type. The desktop, so the desktop type is automated. It's a, manual t it's a manual desktop pool. Some of the uh, things returned, they call a pool, we're used to calling it a desktop pool, but in the APIs they call it a desktop. Instead of calling it a pool, they call it a desktop. Why? I don't know. If you add a machine, they did add HV machine, but to get the information about desktop, to get HV desktop. Get HV pool. And the, the module they created, they created get HV pool, but in the APIs themselves they call them desktops. It gives you also some session data. And for the global sessions, it gives just about the same information, but just with what pod the user is connected to. You will see the, in the, as you see here, for the session names data, the brokering pod, so that can be a different one from the pod the user is connected to. If the load balancer sent the user to pod A, and, but he was assigned a desktop in pod B, it will show the brokering pod to be pod A, but uh, it's connected to, it will be pod B, for example. Uh, a bit of configuration, like I said, you can only do that against a local pod. If you want to change a desktop pool or whatever, you need to connect to that pod. For this example, I've put in the get HV license. This will give you a bit of information about the license. This can be useful. You'll see it as an expiration. Most licenses don't, but this is my VExpert license, so they have an expiration date. And also shows you the use, user model and what functions it are, they are allowed, you're allowed to use according to the license. And you can change the license by set HV license. This just use minus license and between quotes, the, the license you're using in regular text and that will set the new license. As you will see, the new license doesn't have an expiration time. As you see, oh wait, let me go back. Here I do a get HV virtual center. 
in the APIs for Rise and View, they use Virtual Center instead of vCenter. Probably because they were implemented before everyone started calling it vCenter. So it was empty, now I'm going to register the Virtual Center and it will require some names. I'm not a faucet typer and I even cut some out, so. Uh, the username is as several, you got to use user at domain or domain slash user. It will, it will accept both. And for the register uh, virtual center, it returns actually the ID of the newly linked virtual center. Some of those who were at the code session yesterday, you, you've seen the, the raw API call for doing this. And you'll see me, the, the thing I'm doing, I'm getting the virtual center, you can get all the information from that. The, regi the register I did here is very simple. But for the, to register the virtual center, you actually need a lot of things to, that can add it, but you can like the maximum amount of uh, connection, uh, the, the, the instant clone actions, reboot, compose actions. I've kept them default, so you only need to register but you can select whatever else you want if you want to do that. If you want to have less uh, for the composer, you can add as well. This does not clear, the, the clear HV event database doesn't clear the database itself. It clears the database settings. And you can set it. Okay, I've got five minutes left, so I'm not. I'm going to run a bit. Not going to show everything, but I've got a lot of it in here. One of the things with uh, right now and the VMware HV Helper to pull event information, you need to put in the password for the events for the database server in plain text with the get HV events. It was introduced in the latest version, 10.1.1 from Power CLI that we can actually do queries to get event information without using the password. But since 10.1.1 is required, I'm, I'm thinking about yeah, what I'm going to do with, with the function because both needs to be supported. But it is possible. And here you show me getting the event database. Same with instant clone in, in administrator. That's an account you need to set and gives you the ID back and you will see that it has created the instant clone administrator. Here you see me for the, uh, wait, for the new HV instant clone administrator, you see me using the password uh, dollar variable. That one requires uh, a password that is in a, sep in a specific function I, that I've created at first. And you can get some more information from the instant clone administrator. See if I can. Yeah, and the global settings that are actually the settings for the pods. I've also created functions to create a site, to rename sites, to initiate the Cloud Pod Federation, all those kinds of things. Okay, I've copy past to this. Here you see me actually doing a raw API call. I'm not sure why I did this. Oh yeah, this shows, okay. When you put in uh, privileges in the, in the GUI, it has several options. This will show you all the uh, rights that a user can have in the Ryzen view. Sadly, th well, this is a great list, but sadly we can only use a subsection to actually assign to users. So some are, are combined uh, rights that they will get. So we can't be as specific as I would hoped to only give that specific right to the user. Here you see the rights that we can set that are shown in the GUI. And here we will get the actual permissions that a couple of uh, users have. So we first need to create the, the, the permission group of the permissions. And uh, you've got permission, you've got role, so, and the, the permission is the user combined with the role. So we're defining the role, and yeah, I used this for a local uh, session we did. Creating a new role with several functions that, they, or several rights that this uh, user, was, this group was going to have help desk function in this case. 
and there I will create a permission to link the role to an HD group. Like I said, for CloudPod, I also created several different ones. And the new HVPod Federation actually initiates. Uh, one minute left. Time's flying. So I've created several ones. I will just skip over some of the information because. And here, actually, you can also change the name for your CloudPod for sites, for everything. Yeah. Like I said, for sites, you can do things. You can change the name for a site. So I think I will have to leave it at this because we're out of time. If you want more information at the, about the VMware HV Helper, contact me. There are several other guys who can work a bit. And if you look at my blog, you will see a lot of information about it. If you would like to see a function that isn't in there yet, please contact me because we most probably will be able to create them. So thank you.